bitch and burn. Hey everybody. So tonight I am looking to discuss Peter Sotos' 1992 um, audio subreddit. It's known as Buyer's Market. Now, um, somebody messaged me about this and asked if I knew about it and they wanted to know if I did, if whether or not I could do this. And I figured that right now would be about the only time that I'd be willing to talk about this piece of shit because I'm going through all the faces of death and I might start doing the traces of death movies. And so I figured while I'm doing all that ugly stuff, why don't I discuss the ugliest record ever made and produced by a real producer, real producer, sorry, at like Steve Albini, for example. Now this is uh, the work of uh, Peter Sotos. He was born in the early 60s and he uh, pretty much has an obsession with sexual sadism. So he had this zine way back when in the 80s called Pure I ended up, a buddy of mine had a copy up here back in high school, and it was, I don't know which issue, I don't know how many zines were actually made, but the one I had um, was focused on, I remember there was a, it was, of course, in the, it was divided into chunks. It's essentially like a, a cheap bunch of photocopies stapled together, or at least that's the way the copy that I saw looked. There was a thing in there on uh, Henry Lee Lucas and Otis Toole, it was called like, catching up with Henry and Otis or some shit. And of course, Henry Lee Lucas is the confession killer. His piece of shit buddy, Otis Tools, a guy that killed uh, John Walsh's kid, Adam Walsh. Uh, John Walsh, of course, is known for the long running show, America's Most Wanted. Um, there is uh, something about Nazi victories, it was called or something, and it showed a bunch of tr atrocities that the Nazis had committed. And then there was another thing um, about uh, it was called coyotes or some shit or dogs or something. And it was about um, uh, Robin Geicht or Gecht. I can't pronounce his name. Him and the, his three disgusting pieces of shit friends, they ended up raping, torturing, and killing uh, about 18, 19 women throughout the 80s, I think. They were called the something something rippers, like whatever state they were from. They were called, you know, the Chicago rippers or whatever it was. And there were four of them, and he was the leader, and uh, one of his victims was Beverly Washington. And if I'm not mistaken, Beverly survived, and I think she was one of the reasons they ended up being apprehended. Robin's still in prison. He's like in his 70s now. And then there was a, another segment of the scene. What else was it? It was them. It was Otis Toole. It was the Nazis. And I can't remember what... Oh, yeah, that's right. Another one was called, like, Fucked in the Ass or some shit, and it was about the crimes of Dean Carroll, the Candyman, and uh, John Wayne Gacy. So you know that when it comes to Peter Sotos, his interests are absolutely vile. He ended up being brought up on, on kiddie porn charges because he used an image of child pornography on the cover of one of his zines or some shit. I think he was convicted. He was sentenced to probation. Um, he's been referred to as a, like a modern-day Marquis de Sade. And uh, it's weird, you know, because this record, it's, it's broken up into... A five tracks, Children, and then McMartin, which of course is about the McMartin daycare and the satanic sexual abuse scandal that happened with that place back in the 80s. Uh, next track is called Trash, and then Bundy, and the last track is called Victims. Um, he's also released two other audio CDs, uh, Proxy and Waitress, I believe. They were both released in 2005. You know, judging by the cover of this record, do you think you're in for some like hardcore punk rock by way of like b -num or Ass Suck? You know, uh, maybe even sort of like some low-key lack of interest. But no, that's not what you're in for. I, my introduction to this record could not have been more vile. I had this record on cassette that I got off, uh, like, he wasn't really a friend of mine. He was a constant acquaintance. And it was his brother's, and his brother was a disgusting piece of shit. And, oh my God, like... There, I could do a whole video about that guy alone if that's what this channel was about. Fuck, my God, another friend of mine, his dad went, uh, ended up being part of like some sort of cleanup crew that would go into the units and clean them out after people left in the complex that I grew up in. And they found a bunch of pictures of the guy forcing his girlfriend to have sex with a dog at gunpoint. That's how I got the cassette. I ended up lifting it from his younger brother, who was like my sort of friend, but not really. I lifted it, I stole it from him, and Buyer's Market was on there. I didn't know what it was, and it wasn't until high school, which would be 
roughly three or four years later, I mean, two or three years later, give or take, that uh, I was telling somebody about it and they were like, oh yeah, that's, that's the dude that did the zine Pure. And they had this zine called Pure and it was torn up and ripped to shit. And it had all the things that I just discussed. And he was like, yeah, it's like the craziest record in the world. And there was no way to check these things out back then. Like it was, you had to kind of like your friend's opinion was the, the it wasn't an opinion, it was a fact just the way things were. So he was like, yeah, it's this guy, he compiles all of these victims and blah, 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 and he puts their audio, like recounting their tale, their telling of what happened to them. And he was right. My buddy was really on point about this. And so I found this record a little while after it came out by way of like a fifth generation cassette from this piece of shit. And it was so fucked up. I remember the one thing that always stuck out was now that I know that it's at the end of the track called Children there's a little kid screaming that, and crying that she doesn't want to go see her father, even though the system is about to take her, I think, from her foster family and force her to spend a week with him where he's going to sexually abuse her again. And the kid is like screaming and crying and it's just fucking horrifying. Not that the rest of it's exactly a picnic, but I think one of the most like disturbing things about this is the fact that the, the victims here that are recounting what happened to them, they had not given any kind of consent, which is, Leads me into my next issue with this is the producer, Steve Albini. Steve Albini, he produced F Minus, his best record, fucking Wake Up Screaming. He's worked with Godspeed. He's worked with the Pixies. He's worked with Nirvana, uh, the Jesus Lizard, and like 10,000 other bands we've all heard of. He has a degree in journalism. And so I don't know why he signed off on producing this record because he knows that journalists have to get consent. It's a, it's a big part of their profession. And this record was made without any of the victim's consent whatsoever. There's no consent given. So there's that aspect that bothered me too. Um, hang on, is there anything else? Oh yeah, this fits. Gaspar Noé, the, the director behind Irreversible and I Stand Alone. You have, a, he has a, one of a, um, Sotos' books in the background of his film Love on the bookshelf. And uh, Sotos is even thanked in the end credits of that movie. So you know, if Gaspar Noé's into it, it's gonna be really fucked up. And that's what this is. This is just, oh, this is so disgusting. Like after I listened to it, I felt like I needed a shower, you know? And I listened to it again about an hour ago for the first time in decades and nothing's changed. Like it's just as off-putting. Now you can't find this on Spotify, of course. The only place you can find this is on YouTube. I'll toss a link in the description. And concerning the uh, peer zine, somebody on YouTube, I can't remember the channel name, of course, I'll put the link in. Um, they did a really good video about it. It's like an hour long too, where they discuss the history of the, the, the zine and they get way more into it than I did here because I don't want to give too much attention to this. But like I said at the beginning, I just figured since I'm doing all the traces of death and faces or the faces of death and potentially going to start doing the traces of death movies, I figured that I might as well get this disgusting piece of shit out of the way too, because this has had a massive impact on me. Like that kid at the, I think it's like the, the 16 minute mark the 15 minute mark at the end of the track children god but again don't let don't let me lead you to believe that the rest of it's more tolerable or, or palatable it's not this record is abysmal this record is a full on atrocity and yeah so i think i think that's where i'm probably going to leave it um, this record's disgusting uh, peter sotos i don't actually think he's a pedophile i just think um, People are into what they're into, and he's got a thing for sexual sadism, and I just don't get it myself. I think rape is about the most abhorrent thing in the world, so I don't understand why somebody would be so obsessed with things like that. But then again, I guess, like, to each their own or some shit. This record is vile. But that's it. So thank you so much for hanging out with me for a little under 10 minutes while I discussed Peter Sotos' first audio subreddit from uh, audio subreddits obsessed with sex assaults from 1992 known as buyer's market like always if you like this review i was going to say or if you like this record if you like this record you need a therapist but if you like this review or if you agree with me that you think this record is disgusting don't forget to go out and do something i can't even say that at the end of this you guys are amazing i'm getting out of here you are important you matter a hell of a lot but this record's gross have a good night